Latch the windows, lock the doors, and put the kids to bed. It's time for another episode of Tales from the Garage. Okay. Well, it's probably a bit of a surprise to be seeing me uh, here in the garage again. Um, I know it's been a long time now since um, I did a video. And um, actually, the last one I did didn't get published. And this one may not either, for all I know. Um, recorded in my usual room inside the house, not in the garage. When that computer, which is basically a pretty new computer, it's a couple years old, that one had the same freezing glitch that happens to this old Windows 7 computer, um, which screwed up many a video that I've made out here in the garage. Some of them I posted up anyway, even though they got screwed up and they would freeze, and then the sound would slow down, etc., etc. If you've watched my old, old videos, you've probably seen some of those. The ones, at least from the garage. Um, to protect my computer, at least the hard drive, from the cold out here all winter long, uh, shit, it's been like six months now, I actually um, unplugged the monitor and what and brought the, uh, the, the computer hard drive, the whole base of the computer, whatever you call it, um, disconnected into the, into my, uh, into my living area so that it wouldn't get frozen over the winter, because I'm still trying to, you know, get some life out of this Windows 7 computer. I don't have the money to replace it. Um, and, uh, just today on a whim, just today on a whim, I decided, well, you know, hey, it's late May. Um, you know, the weather's gotten as hot as the low 80s here. It's certainly warm enough to bring the computer out here again. And I wasn't sure if I was going to do any more videos out here, um, or even attempt on this computer, just because it freezes. I love coming out here, and when, uh, when we don't have the cold weather, I spend hours out here, many hours. And it's been months since I've done that, apart from coming in and out. This is my main entry and entrance point and exit point from my condo, actually. I don't use the doors much. Um, I pretty much go out the garage door because my car's parked out there. And um, so I come in and out a lot and I'll, might, I might pull an album out here and bring it inside kind of thing. But um, I haven't spent the kind of hours that I typically do out here. And there's like no phone out here. There's no windows. I have no idea what's going on in the rest of the world, you know, that I don't have a television or anything when I'm out here. In a way, that's nice, and in a way, it's a little bit isolating. Um, <clears throat> but in past years, I have spent many an hour out here, uh, even though this computer, you know, being a Windows 7 is a bit outdated. I've done things like sometimes sit out here very late in the evening. Um, <clears throat> just surfing the internet inst instead of doing it inside and I don't know why um, of course like I said weather allowing um, so I did record a video it was 36 minutes long inside um, on my newer computer and it froze it had the same issue that this computer has so I didn't put that one up and I got kind of discouraged actually had somebody leave a very nasty comment about me and my ramblings uh, on one of my older videos. Pretty old one, too. Going back a, maybe two years. Um, a year, so whatever it was. And that discouraged me even more. Um, but uh, don't know why people bother. The comments are just going to get deleted, you know? So anyway, uh, I was going to do a, a video. That 36-minute that, that video I, I did was uh, about what I was listening to at that time. And I kind of stopped listening to everything that was my normal stuff. 
and I pulled out a bunch of classical discs, and I still have them inside, actually. Uh, a pile of classical discs I listen to. I might show them anyway. Um, but I came up with a minorly interesting idea here, and that is, um, and what I'm going to do to prevent this one from running too long is I've got a stack of albums here, and I didn't even grab my CDs that fall into this category. And I thought when the video reaches a certain length, I'm just going to stop and then do a part two later on. So, you know, that the video won't run 45, 50 minutes, an hour, whatever. And something that just hit me um, was I thought I would do a video of showing some of my favorite albums that are essentially duo albums done by just two musicians maybe with overdubbing not necessarily live that's not a qualification for me but I just wanted to show some some of my favorites and um, not attempting to be all-inclusive it was actually more the ones that kind of came to mind or the ones that were in a stack or something and I didn't even Pull out, and I guess if you know, as I go into part two or part three, however long it takes, I'll um, I'll show the CDs that fall into this category. I think all these albums I have on CD anyway, but like it's just easier to show the vinyl because the, the images are bigger. I'm gonna skip over the very first one because I have a subcategory. I'm gonna start off with a real uh, oddball choice here. Um, from the early 80s, 19, recorded July 1984. This is now my, I've never been able, I've been, I have it on CD, I have the vinyl, I bought it as a fairly new release, probably came, probably came out early in 85. Um, and it's an album that, so now 85, how many decades is that? I still haven't decided if I even like this album, but it's such an oddball. It's a David Torn solo album, called Best Laid Plans, and uh, I really can't do anything about the glare, can I? No. So it's David Torn on guitar, uh, Jeffrey Gordon on percussion, and even though it doesn't say it anywhere, if you're familiar with David Torn's live performances, um, he's always used looping devices and things like that, so that... Uh, you're generally not hearing two instruments necessarily. You're hearing maybe three or four, you know, two or three guitar parts going, and then with Jeffrey Gordon on percussion. Now he's kind of refined his whole live process over the years, and does solo live performances as well as um, live performances in the band context, where he really uses a lot of sampling. Now I guess he's using a computer to do it. Um, but back in 84, he wouldn't have been. And so he was kind of in, I guess, his early stages of experimenting with um, kind of live looping. And I don't even know what, what looping devices were around. The one thing I kind of like about this album is it's less dense than his more recent stuff, where he will have, you know, six or eight different loops and things going on and um, altering the sound and the computer kind of thing. Um, this was more because of the the lack of sophistication with the electronics of the day. Um, Best Laid Plans is essentially him playing live, doing a little bit of looping, um, and then with the drummer, Jeffrey Gordon. And I think Jeffrey Gordon has an electronic drum that basically makes a one-note sound because throughout the whole album, on all these different tracks, every once in a while you hear this little percussive, like boom, 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 and instead of being a drum sound, it's actually electronic note, but it's always playing the same note, which leads me to think that it's not a sound that's coming from David Torn's guitar, it's some kind of electronic drum pad that he has, and back then the electronic drums would have been really in their infancy. And um, so not a lot of different variations on the sound you could get. So it sounds like a, a drum pad that just kind of plays the same electronic note every time you hit it. But it's always heard in a, percussion, a percussive fashion. Uh, it's never an extended note. So it, it, it's, it's always the same note that it plays. So it's kind of an interesting setup. 
And the whole album kind of sounds like it's improvised. It's a little bit noisy, but if you're familiar with David Torn's work, it's less noisy than 90% of his work, I'd say. Um, and it's one of those albums I keep going back to and back to, and, and uh, I almost didn't buy it on CD, and then uh, I happened to wander into the, the Borders store before Borders closed, the bookstore, that always had a... Uh, always had a great music section for jazz and classical and stuff like that. Um, and they had a bunch of ECM titles on sale for a winter clearance sale. I think they were like half price, and I couldn't pass up, so I ended up buying this again on CD, which I'm glad I did because I, you know, my turntable's wonky and it's messed up and I don't really play records. Um, but it got me listening, having obtained the CD, and this is still a number of years ago, um, it got me back into listening to the album again, and I was still like, Gee, I don't know if I like this or not, but it's, it's such a, he's an interesting guy with an interesting uh, musical mind and direction. And um, I've got a bunch of his things, and you know, some of them I really don't like, but, but, this, but this is just one of those things that just keeps on, you have to be in the mood for it, I guess, kind of album. Um, but it's an interesting duet. I love the duet concept. My favorite types of albums, I've said a million times before, are essentially solo albums. Not solo live in the studio, like solo piano or kind of thing, or like classical guitar necessarily. I like a, a solo album where an artist goes in and uses the studio and overdubs different instruments on top of each other. Those are my favorites. Um, next to that, my favorite thing are duet albums. So actually, you know, totally by chance, most of these albums are actually ECM albums, but, um, and actually, who knows, after the next few, they may all be ECM albums for all I know. Um, but delving into a slightly more mainstream area, and this came really early in my musical education away from pop music, I probably picked this up, uh, well, it's an album from 76, recorded in 76, released on 76, on Paul Blay's label, Improvising Artists, and it's um, one of the volumes, I only have this one, of um, Dave Holland, bassist Dave Holland, oops, I just hit the mic, bassist Dave Holland and Sam Rivers, the saxophone player, um, so Dave Holland's playing upright bass, Sam Rivers playing soprano and tenor saxophone, just two long pieces, a 17 minute piece, and a 21 minute piece and there was another volume of this which I don't have I would love to get both of these on CD though this I don't have on CD and this was a quite a different world for me beautiful album um, it was a different world for me because it was hard for me to you know I'm basically a guitarist so there's no guitar there and coming out of the rock thing um, getting into jazz you would generally hook onto instruments you were familiar with so there's no drums there that you could kind of hook into and all that so these next two albums are our two favorite duet albums that were initially very difficult for me to get into yet i knew that they were special and um the lineup oddly enough even though there's no common musicians is basically the same here's another duet album i showed before soap suds another one i wish i had on cd which i don't uh this is ornette coleman who plays tenor saxophone and trumpet in duet with Charlie Hayden on upright bass. So it's very closely tied in really to the Dave Holland and Sam Rivers in terms of musical direction. And it's just another one that um, I bought really early into getting into jazz or any music that was non-rock. And again, very quiet, This, which is really particularly why I would want this on CD and I didn't unfortunately pick it up while it was in print. Um, and it's, you know, just again, upright bass and either saxophone or trumpet along with the upright bass. And this is, you know, these first two albums that I'm showing, uh, well, the Dave Holland, Sam Rivers, and this one, this is essentially live in the studio. Um, but you know, this is very quiet music. You don't have, you don't have any drums kind of making rattling noises or like any chordal harmonic instruments like pianos or guitars. It was very intimate music. Uh, this is music that you 
really have to listen to. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't think to put it on as background music. It's the kind of music that when you really want to sit there and absorb music, um, as subtle as it is and everything, this is music that you pay attention to. Um, another one I love that I wish I had on CD. And really the last one for people that um, I guess might be associated with the more mainstream forms of jazz. I always consider this to be, this next release to almost be like the heavy metal of jazz in a way because of its intensity. Um, and it's uh, duets, John Coltrane and Rashid Ali on drums, Rashid Ali and um, John Coltrane plays tenor saxophone and bells. And this was actually uh, recorded in February 67, I think. Yeah, February 1967, right in Rudy Van Gelder's studio in, in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. This was actually Coltrane's last studio dates. Um, and it's very intense. This is it's hard to listen to. This is now you have to be in the mood for because it's so intense. It really is free jazz. There's a lot of squeaking and squawking and wild, loud saxophone playing. And the drum, the drums are all freeform, just really wild stuff. This I do have on CD. Um, and the CD is particularly great because it has not only the four long tracks that are on the album, um, but some additional material recorded at the same sessions that ended up being put on a, on a different album, a uh, different vinyl album back in the day. Um, but um, yeah, this is, this is an, an interstellar space. I always kind of considered this to be like the heavy metal of, of jazz. Just really intense, you know, it's free jazz. It's Rashid Ali is just battering the drums and Coltrane's just on fire. But you have to be in the mood for it. And there's no way that, that is certainly not background music. There's no doubt. No doubt as to that. Um, okay, here's a guy associated with ECM, but it's not an ECM album. I've showed this before. I've talked about it. This is an album that many, many, many people hate and I particularly love. Um, Miroslav Vitas' album just called Miroslav. And this is, um, one track was recorded in December 76, but the rest of the album was recorded in July of 1977. And what it is, is it's a series of duets with uh, Miroslav Vitas playing upright bass, uh, piano, electric piano, mini Moog synthesizer, and the Arp String Ensemble. And on most of the tracks, Don Elias playing multiple percussion, drum kits, hand drums, all kinds of things. And uh, on the one track recorded in December 76, there's a, a different percussionist playing percussion on just one track on the album. Um, so it's a series of duets with the percussionist and with Miroslav is doing a lot of overdubbing on um, keyboards and bass. Well, actually, not always a lot. Um, there might, on some tracks, there might be just one keyboard and one bass part, and then others are much more intensive. Um, it's it's a jammy album. Um, there's a couple short compositions, and there's some longer tracks, which maybe meander a bit. But that's exactly why I like it, and exactly why a lot of people don't like it. Um, you could kind of tell it was there were there were times when there was just a rhythmic foundation being set up by um, usually Don Elias or maybe in the in, in the other in one track um, the other percussionist uh, Armin Halberian is the name of the other percussionist who only plays on one track, um, but sometimes there's this rhythmic sequence set up. And you can tell that Miroslav is just like improvising like on an electric piano or something like that. Um, but that's exactly what I like about it. It, it. You know, and at times it's jammy and maybe the music doesn't always go somewhere because it's not all composed. But that's pretty much exactly why I like it. And it's still an album that's under 40 minutes. It's like, I think like 38 minutes or something like that. So you've got six tracks of 38 minutes and none of them are, are outrageously long. Um, but I love this album. I'm glad I picked this one up on CD while it was available because I think the whole company that put it out is no longer around. 
But again, another duet album. I'm going to show one more. And one that I kind of forgot was a duet album in a way. And by somebody, I, I have two, I think two or three albums by uh, Juan Martin, who's a uh, an acoustic guitarist, who I don't know a whole lot about. Uh, I only have a few albums by him. Very, he, he composes mostly his own material. Um, he sticks to nylon string and steel string acoustic guitars. Very tasteful. Um, doesn't do a whole lot, doesn't do an intense amount of improvisation. He writes, he's more of a composer that write, writes pieces with, with vibes and feelings to them. Um, but this is the first album I picked up by him. And this one, uh, again, I missed out on the CD. It's out of print, called Painter and Sound. And it's a duet of Juan Martin's guitars and Mark Isham playing keyboards, soprano, saxophone, and trumpet. So it's Juan Martin providing the guitars and all the other instrumentation you hear comes from Mark Isham, who's certainly a known quantity here. Um, a lot of keyboards, you know, laying a nice background for the guitars. And um, also Mark playing soprano sax, which you don't hear him play a lot, as well as the trumpet, which is his primary instrument. But there are a lot of keyboards on here. This is a pretty album. This is an easy album to get into. Um, some might even kind of disparagingly call it New Age, but um, I don't really think it is just because it's not intense or wild or fusion or anything like that. So I got through a bunch of them. Um, and... Uh, I'm going to stop now because of the length, and again, I don't know if this really recording has gone the way I've hoped it would, and um, you know, I'll pick up at a future time with, with some of the rest of the recordings, and uh, probably some CDs as well. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this one comes out, and you'll actually see a new Tales from the Garage from me. Hope everybody's doing well, thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully be back soon. Take care. Tune in next time for more Tales from the Garage.